river restoration project that we undertook. Um, Seafield Estate alone all the land around here which made it very easy for a river restoration project because they own both banks. Quite often we have problems with river restoration that we have different landowners and obviously one's concerned his land's eroding another it's um, it's gaining etc. But here we're very fortunate we have a site that has been grazed but this area here they weren't using it for very much in particular and unfortunately they were having to manage the river quite a lot because over time it had been straightened and then dug out because it kept dumping sediment in various parts, parts of the channel. And so every year the estate were having to come and dig out the sediment, pile it on the banks, which of course then built up the banks even higher. So when there were spates, it, the water level had to get higher before it could flood out onto the floodplain, which meant more water was going downstream, which meant it was dumping more sediment downstream. So it wasn't functioning very well as a river system. And so the estate very kindly allowed us to look at it and say what could we do to improve how this river functions and what we basically have done is taken away um, the tops of the embankments which I'm going to show you now so that when we have the spate events and we're talking about the ones that you get sort of two or three times a year as well as the big events they can flood over rather than be canalised downstream. Now they had realised that there was a problem with this and so boulders the ones behind you had been put into the burn over time to help break up the flow in the spates but they found this wasn't really helping the situation so see the size of those boulders we're going to head over to where the burn is now and you see the size of the burn and just get an appreciation of just how much rock armor had been put in to try and solve the problems we'll come over and i'll show you what we've done so as you can see on a day like this where we've not had a lot of rain, it doesn't look that much, does it? Yet, when it's in spate, the water level overtops these banks. So four years ago, where you see the gravel there, that bank was about another four or five foot higher than that. Okay, which meant the water level had to be huge before it could flood over onto its floodplain. By taking the top off that, now when we get high water levels, um, it's able to spread out. So a week after we took the top off the embankments, we got a spate, the water can start to spread out. So it takes up more area, it runs onto the adjoining floodplain, that then acts as a sponge and holds it, whereas in the past, the water would have raced down to the bottom. The sediment we took out, we used to fill up some drainage ditches, so it was held on site, and that again helps add to using the, the land as a sponge. A lot of rock armour had been put in across the channel to break up the flow and if we just walk up here we'll see where there was rock armour, it's been taken out and we replaced it with what we call large woody debris. Okay, We knew if we just took the rock armour out the river would do a bit of a oh my goodness what's going on, what can we do? So we've replaced it with a softer structure. If any of you did physics at school you'll know that concrete, the impact and the amount of things we bound off it it's far more than something like wood, it absorbs the energy. So it's a softly, softly solution. What it also allows is you'll see that sediment has gradually built up behind the wood structure. But on the other side, it's now starting to create a pool, which is good for the habitat for salmon and features like that. So just walk up to this little bit. So what we have here is where, once upon a time, that was the, what the channel looked like four years ago. It was straightened, okay, and they put rock armour in to try and slow the flow and stop some of the sediment. Some of it was so big we couldn't actually take it out. I think there's a massive piece just behind you. That was about the biggest piece we could get out. But we took out what we could and then we put a tree in, but we kept its root ball, ball attached and then buried the root ball into the bank. So what we've got here is then a natural system that has over time the water's found its way around. So initially it started to come around the back of the root system but it's now dumped sediment there and it's going around the other side. Sediment's backed up behind so we now have a different level. 
So it's not incising anymore because we were finding what was happening was the river was gradually just getting deeper and deeper, basically, incising. We've now got a pool feature, which the salmon like. They then use that to jump up to the other side. And we've got much more variant of sediment within the burn, which is more conducive to them laying reds in, October, in the November time. Right, if you look upstream from the high spot, that's how it used to look. What we've done here, we've replicated three or four spots further up as well, including a site where there was a lot of rock armour sort of lying half out into the stream and we've replaced that with trees. That's instigated meandering and natural processes. And if you... Is that picture? And... That one. That's what it looked like before we did any work. And if you'd now like to slowly walk up to where you can see the tree, keep that in mind and see what's happened naturally since May four years ago. Basically, the river's starting to re-naturalise itself. It's picking up sediment off the bends. It's depositing it in the next point. Bends are starting to collapse in some um, banks in some places, but depositing a bit further on. And we're starting to get a meandering river. OK, we're up to the next bit. What we've also done is we're considering this holistically is having connected the floodplain, it's now wetter. We've now planted up the site with lots of trees as well, a mixture of Caledonian pines and broadleafs, such that over time we've created a wet woodland. So the trees in themselves will help break up the flow during spates and their root systems will also help absorb some of that water that's landing on the floodplain. Those that are on the edge of the river help to stabilise their root system, will help stabilise the banks. But also when the trees do fall, when the banks do erode, the trees will fall into the river and help provide more natural habitats. So we're starting to perpetuate a system where the river looks after itself. So. As you came up, you'll see where there's been sediment deposition, where it's starting to erode on the opposite banks. That's what it looked like four years ago. And the juniper bush that's now on the edge isn't even in the picture here. And that's in just four years. So what we've actually done, that used to come pretty much straight down. A little bit of a bend, but nothing like we've got now. We've doubled the wetted area because we've doubled the stream length. So the water's got further to move. It's got more points that take out the energy, so that helps contribute to slowing the flow a bit. Um, and it's more opportunity to create features, because now when the spates come, they don't wash out all the features. So it's good for the river, and it's good for the species that live around it, particularly for the fish. I normally spend over an hour walking this site with everyone, so I feel like I've only just given you like the insidious of snapshot um, of what's going on here, but hopefully you get an idea what you can do to help rivers function more naturally. In itself, it's probably a drop in the ocean of contributing to flood management. But if we can replicate this in lots of places that aren't prime agricultural land or, you know, aren't housing or there aren't constraints like the rivers, then maybe all those drops add up together and they help contribute to natural flood management. But on a local level, it helps. The landowner now doesn't have to manage sediment every year. There's less water hitting down at down the hatchet at quite that speed and it's it's about taking the tops off it it's not you know solving everything it's taking the tops off so that hopefully the whole system is more resilient for the future okay <laughs>